So in this video, I want to talk about I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too. This is an anime that I've watched multiple times. I've read a couple of the first volumes and I actually do want to read more of the light novels. And this is the thing. I know what this show is like. I'm very self-aware of it. Like, l let me cook for a little bit here. I understand that this show is super cliche, super perceived as trashy. Even I sit there and watch many parts of it and go, yeah, this is kind of trashy and how it's building this harem, how he's such a chad, he's so amazing. I, in another video, I used a reference of the Kirito effect where someone becomes too chad-like, where it becomes a issue for the story. But in this situation, yeah, he's so chad-like, it's almost comical. And it's almost fun to watch how over the top he is because he's gone from someone that is overweight, ugly, lives alone a life, has no friends, is bullied. His whole life is not going well for him. He's ready to end it all. He's not in a good state. And then he ends up going into another world, getting a 100 levels, and then suddenly having a massive transformation body-wise and then gets this super hot chick to come to him after he like helped her as he was fat. And then she's like, oh, come to my school for the super rich and elite. And you don't have to pay for anything. Which, to be honest, he would have been able to afford it with the game system, converting assets and all that. But going from that to just being like, yeah, a complete stud muffin with this hot chick. And then other chicks that are all interested in him. And then some of them definitely have some amazing assets very amazing personality traits. Yes, those giant melons that are growing out in the fields are bobbling like hell. And the anime is very self-aware of it as well because they're constantly highlighting on that and there's jokes thrown in there as some of the characters taking photos and stuff and being like, yeah, they're pretty scummy. And then you've also got his other life in the game world where he's got a princess saying, hey, marry me. Like... To me, it's one of those where it's like, okay, so he's got multiple girls throwing him, throwing themselves at him. I would say, oh, not even counting the teacher, there's around pretty much like six girls at this point. Probably going to go up to seven at this point. And the fact that they're melding the real world and the game world together and they're kind of flip-flopping it around where some chick from the other world is coming to the school world and the chick from the school world's gone into the other world... And then there's that little part at the end of the anime where they're all in the the spa and you've got the chick from the real world in with the other girls and it's like, okay, that's, you know. So I really want to see in season two, which has been confirmed, what that relationship is because he's smashing almost two different groups of people together and so clearly the princess is probably going to find out about the real world for his world. I'm just like where that story goes and that's what i mean sure you can complain about all the trashy elements in there of him being so over the top so overpowered so chad like and that's a lot of the complaints i just don't care i really don't care yes i know it's trashy in itself but i just don't care it's so much fun and i just am so curious to see what the story turns out because we don't see that many isekais where they mess with the idea of throwing both worlds where he can bounce between the two. Yes, there are some stories out there where the main protagonist does bounce between both worlds, but it's not that common. Most of the time, it's one of those where they get thrown into an alternative world and they're stuck there and they've got to make a choice of do they want to go home or do they want to stay? And it all depends on their past life if they want to stay or not. But with this case, he's balancing the two. And I kind of thought to myself at one point, like, why doesn't he just stay in the the fa like the fantasy world? He's so overpowered. He could live any easy life that he wants. But that also being said, someone would probably end up inheriting that house and finding that door and then ending up going into that world, potentially. I mean, he can lock it up and stuff, but I'm like, what would happen if it was a long period of time? Like... Yeah, I originally had a theory that his grandfather was that sage, but then I don't even know why I had that theory, because then you see the dead body of the sage in the anime. I don't know why I had that theory. I remember reading it in the light novels as well, but I think it was just kind of like, I was just trying to work out why the grandfather bought that door, had that door there, and never thought to open the door and go in there, unless the door rejected him. 
which I just feel like that would be that would feel a little bit backhanded to the grandfather because the grandfather seems like a decently good person. Unless the grandfather did go in that world, did do a lot of stuff in there, but wasn't the sage, but ended up locking the door and only allowing it so that, I mean, there's there's a potential, a bunch of theories. But I do feel like, based on the type of story that it is, it's going to be one of those too good to be true where the grandfather just never opened the door and never fought to open it, and it's just like a convenient plot there. Which, yeah, that's what I mean. The story has very much got a bunch of cliches, a bunch of convenient plot points that kind of just allow everything to perfectly line up. I I would actually be disappointed if this story didn't become a harem where he actually just dates multiple girls. Because at this point, it's like, dude, you've got all these amazing chicks throwing themselves at you. You could have probably all of them at the same time and none of them would probably complain. Why not do it? you deserve it bro take it bro it's yours if i was in his situation i'd be like you know what if i can have it all i'll take it all and be at that and especially at the fact that he's like inherited this whole additional real estate in that fan in that fantasy world as well so it's like like i said if you can have it take it i would be more annoyed if the story tries to peddle the whole oh i just want to be with one girl i have to make a decision it's like dude there's no decisions to be made other than just take it all that's how i see it as far as like the stakes go i do feel like the story is trying to set up this idea that there's going to be this overarching villain but the fact that he is so strong and he's building up so much power, I think the story is more about the chaotic nature of him balancing the fantasy world and the real world and the girls throwing themselves at him. And yeah, there's there's clearly going to be some overarching villain in there, but you shouldn't take the, ser the story serious. That's how I've always seen it. That's why I, whenever I rewatch it, I just know what the story's about. It's stupid. It's silly. There's also clearly the siblings as well because they are still kind of like following him around. I do wonder how that relationship's going to go. I hope to God he doesn't tell them about the door. They don't deserve to know about it. And I also do wonder if they would end up turning on him again because they'd see it as unfair that he was able to get that access to that door and live that life and be able to, re you know, rebuild himself and look all great and they'd be kind of resentful. But at the same time, the fact that he didn't abandon them and he stuck by them even through that, they might be like, you know what, he's a good brother, he was good to us, we don't want to abandon him. Maybe they might change their mind. I just kind of don't want too much of the real world and the fantasy world smashing together. Some crossover is good, but I feel like if you throw too much crossing over, it's going to get too chaotic and it's going to be too hard for the story to maintain it and make it make sense. So I don't want too much crossing over. Again, I'd love to ask the question off to you, the individuals, because this is one of those stories, like I said, some people are going to either love it and some people are going to either hate it. It's very much an easy self-insert. I just feel like a lot of people that are going to hate it are going to hate it because of the overpowered nature, the harem nature, the fan service nature, the hot girls. I know one of the biggest complaints was why is the author so obsessed with attractiveness? But to be honest, that is literally how the world works in this day and age is attractiveness. I mean, look at video games now. They're trying to make characters unattractive to appeal to those that aren't as attractive because unattractive people are getting upset that attractive people get all the attention it kind of reminds me of a movie that i heard about where it's called like the beauty tax where people would be taxed more the more attractive they were and it got to the point where it ended up flipping the other way where attractive people deliberately made themselves look ugly because they didn't want to get taxed more and then it just ended up being like an arms war to the bottom and so it kind of feels like yeah, attractiveness is a major component when it comes to how we as individuals in society work. And so, yeah, the story makes sense. You know, attractive people are, are those that a lot of people look at. You know, they see a model and they go, oh my God, she's beautiful. Or he's attractive. Or look at those muscles. Or look at that physique. Or look at that clothes. Like, everything is about fashion and attractiveness. So, I do feel like some people that dislike the story are those that are probably a little bit disjointed and feel a little bit insecure about it, which is understandable. You know, we all go through that. So that's just my take on it. Love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.